Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to be covering the program window. In the previous episodes I have covered the project window, the source window, the sequence window, and now I'm covering the program window. And the way you access these is by holding down your shift key and hitting one. Notice it highlights here. Two, shift two goes to the source monitor. Shift three goes to your uh, sequence or timeline. Shift four goes to your program window. And now any uh, shortcuts that I'm going to be using are going to be relevant to my program window here. So I'm going to hit my tilde key, it's in between the tab and the escape key, or while my mouse is hovering over the program window. Program window is very similar to your source window. But what this does, instead of uh, viewing a clip, is it shows where your playhead is in your timeline. Your program window displays your timeline and your edit in your timeline. So right now my playhead is over this frame right here. If I move it, this updates and shows where my playhead is in, in my timeline now. Up here you have your little menu drop down for some basic features. There's really not much up in here that, that, that changes the settings in your program window. Your program window is more of a display, but you do have your wrench down here for display options. If you want to show time code over it, you can go to overlays. Uh, you have things like safe margins as well if you're trying to do like titles and keep them safe from hitting the edge of the screen. So you have various display options on the wrench down here. As we mentioned in the source monitor window, you pulled this, this little pull down window here. Uh, will either display full quality, full resolution of the clips that you're playing. If you had, happen to be lagging, if you're using something really high like 4K or 5K, you can pull this down and tell it to show quarter resolution while you're editing. And it will drop the resolution while you're editing, but it doesn't change the quality of the actual clip. For compositing, you have this little fit to window here. You can bring the size of your window down to 10% if you're doing compositing and having things fly in from other directions. It shows this is your canvas here, and this area is kind of your null area that... Uh, well, you can uh, see wireframes in when you're doing compositing, but it won't display the image until you bring it in. We'll, we'll have some episodes on compositing, but we can zoom up as well, 150%, where you can just tell it to fit in the screen. Over here is your timeline, timeline time code. This starts with hours, which is at zero, then we're one minute in, 40 seconds, 18 frames. So you've got your hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And as we grab our playhead here, we move it around, you'll see the time code change. Down here at the bottom, we have markers. If you want to add markers, this will just add markers to your timeline, not necessarily to the program window. But the, the, the markers between your program window and your timeline are in sync. So if you add them in your timeline, they will show in your program window. If you add them in your program window, they show in your timeline. These are kind of inseparably synced. So if I hit that, it's added a marker, and you'll notice it's added to my timeline down here as well. You can set in points and out points on your timeline like you can clips. If you hit I, it sets an in point on your timeline. Move forward here and hit O. I've got an endpoint and an outpoint on my timeline now. And you'll see those are inseparably connected down here as well. Uh, and your timeline window adds those endpoints and outpoints as it did in my program window. These things are basically mirrored. It's just a copy of your timeline, essentially. I'm going to hit tilde over my big window here. And you have the same navigation features that you have in your source monitor. You have your go to endpoint. Go to outpoint is over here, your play and move through frame by frame, which is kind of, you have quicker navigation tools with uh, shift I, shift O, goes to your endpoint and your outpoint on your timeline. JKL rewinds, stops, and forwards. If you missed out on that, go back to the source monitor episode and I go into JKL and more description. It works exactly the same inside of your timeline and it works exactly the same inside of your program window. J rewinds, K stops, L fast, and L forwards. And your space bar plays and pauses. We will go through lift and extract in a separate episode, but if you have a certain area selected in your timeline and you hit the shortcuts, semicolon or colon, it will lift out those sections that you have selected on your timeline. So lift, it just pulled it out and it's, that's basically a cut and it's waiting to paste it somewhere. So if I move in my timeline and hit control V, it'll paste that section that I just lifted out there. And then the other tool here is extract. It basically cuts and fills the gap. So if I hit semicolon, it cuts and leaves the gap and it gets ready to paste it. If I hit my quotation key, which is next to the semicolon, it extracts it and it fills the gap and now it's ready to paste my footage. Last couple icons here, if you want to take a picture of a frame, you can simply click here and it will save the frame as the same resolution and it has different compression features here with bitmap, which is high quality, uh, more compressed, which is JPEG, and some lossless formats like DPX that will save a high quality still of the image that we're saved on right here. And you also have the option of telling it to import into your project after you save it to a certain location by hitting browse. Uh, when you hit OK, it'll import that still frame into your uh, project. And then you have your buttons down here, same as the source panel. These ones mirror your source panel down here. Once again, go back to the source 
tutorial, the source window tutorial, if you want more detail on this, but your button editor, you can drag certain icons down here to have a certain functionality. And if you hit reset layout, it goes back to default. And then last of all, you've got your duration over here. This is your in and out duration. If you don't have an endpoint or outpoint on your timeline, it basically shows the duration of the entire timeline. This is two minutes, 49 seconds, and 18 frames. If you have an in and out point on your timeline, it's going to show how long your in and out point is. That's eight seconds and three frames long. To clear an in and out point, your shortcut is on a Macintosh, it is Option X. On a PC, it is Control Shift X. We'll clear your in and out points. But those are the main features on the program window and what it is used for. If you have any questions, please post them and thanks for watching.